So we built a dividend discount model on the last one for Yum, and we look here, here's the price estimate, 52 bucks for the stock. And then if we go to the market, we see 77.50. Um, that's a pretty big difference. Uh, that's, that's more than 50% above our estimate. Uh, and so maybe our model has some issues, and we made some simple assumptions, so almost certainly our model has issues. Um, so I wanna see what kinds of things would make us closer to the market. And so we can do some simple stuff like, um, you know, what if goal seek. And so what if we set our price to, uh, what did I say, 7750 um, by changing something like uh, our current growth rate. And I hit okay. You know, and all of a sudden now, instead of 15%, we'd have to see that growth now is more like 17% and then go down from there. And that's not completely outside of the realm of possibility. We've had some, you know, 17, 15, 15 and a half. You know, that's not crazy. Um, uh, and so that's, you know, something that could be affecting the model. Uh, if I put that back to 15, again, we go back there, we could do the same thing where we could goal seek things like, okay, well, again, I wanna see this look more like the market price by changing something like our discount rate. So what if our discount rate is too high? Um, what discount rate would fix that and um, you know you can see that instead of 12% maybe our discount rate is only 9.9% so maybe uh, the market is assuming that low interest rates are going to stick around for a long time uh, and that we don't really uh, aren't going to see really high rates uh, anyway there's stuff like that that we can do uh, I'm going to switch this back again too or we can do something more difficult uh, and make like a self-expanding model and say well uh, you know, we cut the model off after 25 years, said we'll hit perpetual growth, and then we valued all the dividends 25 through infinity into the DGM. What if we're not actually going to hit perpetuity until like 50 years out or 75 years out, right? So we could do something like that where I'm going to set up in the number of years of the model, and I'm going to put in 23. I know it's a 25-year model, but we're actually plugging one and two, uh, and then we're not assuming anything for uh, this discount uh, of growth factor until year three, and that's what we're going to build off of. So, um, so we're actually only doing that for 23 years, uh, as we can see here. Okay, so we can rewrite this growth factor now, and say, okay, well, actually, our model looks like this. We're going to look. We're going to start at 15 percent. We're going to subtract the perpetual growth, and then it's a linear model. So we're going to divide by the number of years in the model. And that way we can allow the number of years to float and this factor will, will change to fit. Um, so to do that, what we need is um, to take the price here uh, and the, you know, or I'm sorry, the price, the dividend is going to be built off the growth. And we need, so we just need to expand this sort of thing out all the way. So we can just take the number or year, make it plus one, there's year 26. Now I'll do both of these. Um, and then drag this over so it's going to build off the growth. I can hit control shift right and control R and fill all those over. Okay. Um, oh, didn't need to do that. There we go. Uh, and then I just need to build uh, these two uh, rows with logic so I can, uh, I can rewrite these. So, you know, this is going to take whatever the previous growth rate, I'm going to subtract this growth factor. Um, that linear growth factor from the previous one until we hit perpetual growth. Once we hit perpetual growth, um, uh, we want it to stop and just keep kicking out perpetual growth numbers, right? So it should be 4% thereafter once we hit perpetual because that's what it means. Uh, and so I'm going to write that. So I'm going to hit if. Um, and so if the previous year is um, less than... Um, and we could put less in or equal to, I'll show you why this doesn't actually work, but if the previous year's growth was less than or equal to our perpetual growth rate, all right, I'm gonna lock that, um, then we might as well have it keep kicking out that perpetual growth rate because that's our new forever rate, okay? Um, but if that's not true, then we just wanna subtract the growth factor off. So I can just take this previous year minus our factor, whatever that is and that factor will change based on the number of years the model is going out. So we can write something like that. It works pretty well. So if I hit control shift right uh, and then control R, you'll see none of my percents actually change, okay? Um, so this is still 4% like it was before. Um, no big deal. The problem is, uh, the only problem with this is when I go to this one, 
Uh, it's going to drop to 352 before it starts kicking out 4 over and over again. Uh, and the reason is this is actually slightly above 4%. So our less than or equal to is missing that this is actually at 4%. Um, right now. So sometimes little rounding errors like this, you see that, that really, really small amount above 4% is throwing off our uh, calculation. Not a big deal. I can fix that um, just by instead of it, we can say if the previous growth rate is less than or equal to 4% plus some really small number, uh, so in this case a hundredth of a percent. So if it's within a hundredth of a percent of 4 um, then we fill it over and now you'll see it'll fix that so our once we hit 4% and 25 it's just going to continue to kick out 4% forever so I'm just going to highlight control shift over control R and just fill 4% forever okay so it's just going to be 4% forever now okay All right. so then uh, we just have to build the last piece now this is actually pretty uh, this is going to be a pretty long statement uh, so what we want here is we want this um, we want this to identify where we hit perpetual growth um, and once we hit perpetual growth uh, we want it to apply our uh, dividend discount uh, or our DGM our uh, dividend growth model uh, that we did here last time so I'm actually going to build this into um, the line above now so um, if I just highlight these and delete them for now, uh, and then we'll have to change where this price estimate is looking as well. Uh, but the, the main idea is I want it to identify perpetual growth. And perpetual growth is if I'm in a year and this is one, but if I'm here, it doesn't matter, same thing. I want to identify, is this percent the same as this percent? Then that means we're at perpetual growth. Um, and then we need to apply that DGM. Uh, but we only want to do it where this is 4% and this is 4%, but this is not 4%. Um, and so that's the only tricky part to this, uh, as you'll see. So if I just go here and I say, uh, if, uh, uh, and this, you know, if, uh, and we'll start with the other part. So not, so if we do, if not this, um, equal to this. Okay. So if they're not equal, then we're not in perpetual growth yet. And in that case, all I need is I just take the dividend of that year and divide by 1 plus R. So I just discount that dividend back and it becomes part of the value. It'll get summed in uh, to the power of how far out we are. So we're just going to present value that dividend. Um, oh. So we're just going to present value the dividend if these two growth rates are not the same. Okay. Now, if they are the same, we are in perpetual growth. So if this is 4% and this is 4%, we're in perpetual growth. But the problem is in this one's in 4% too. So we can't just do um, if uh, this equal to this. Uh, that won't actually work um, because that's going to be true in every... So once it becomes true, it'll become true for every single year going on. And we want it, the model to stop at that point. So it, it actually requires two things. So I'm going to do an if and. So if this is equal to this, okay, so if they're both 4% our perpetual rate and uh, this, oh, and not this equal to this. So if this is 4% and this is 4%, but this is 4% and this is not 4%. That's the year we hit perpetual. Okay, That's basically what I'm writing in there. So I can close that up. Then the value of true gets a little messy, but we got to put in that DGM model uh, where it says the next, uh, the value, the price value of the stock in that time period is equal to uh, the next year dividend divided by uh, R minus G. Uh, so here's our discount minus our growth. And I'm just locking anything over here because they're going to stay fixed. Um, whereas all these others, G's and H's are going to be floating. So um, yeah, 
got all those, okay? And then that's gonna give us a price in the year of perpetuity, but we gotta discount that price all the way back to, so then we just divide that amount um, by our discount factor again, so one plus R to the power, uh, just like we did with the other ones, so to the power of that year, okay? So that is a nice, big, complicated, fun thing, right? Why did it go to value if false? If not. value of false, and we want it to be zero if it's false. I think that's our... All right, so there's the, the number. Okay, so you see all, when I filled that over, control R, all these stayed the same. And what you're gonna see is now, that's what we want, okay? So here's where we hit Perpetuity, again, this is slightly more than 4%, and it's looking for 4%, 4%, that they're equal. So here we hit perpetuity, 4%, um, 4%, not 4%, 4%. Um, and so there, thereafter, it's just going to kick out zeros, okay? Now, you can fill this all the way over. You're going to have one little thing you got to do with it. So if I hit Control-R and fill that all the way over to the XFD um, column, which will take it a while because that's a... A lot of thinking there. Um, it's got to work through the logic, but it's going to mess up here because it can't look forward anymore. So I'm just going to delete that very last year because we don't need 16,000 years anyway. Um, but this should work fine. And then our price estimate, we can just, instead of summing a, a, a given range, uh, we can actually do um, H4 all the way over. All right, so control shift right and go all the way to X. FC for so we just sum up all of the things and so we should get the same price estimate here and what this allows us to do is now goal seek the number of years and the model will expand uh, to match okay so we can just do things like um, again goal seek and we want to see the market price of the stock and now we're going to do it by changing the number of years of the model Okay, and so the model, that's going to feed into here. Oh my, that's bogging the computer down. <laughs> um, sorry, my computer's going real slow with the, the active presenter running and that, that amount of logic being run. Um, so it feeds this into here, which lowers the growth factor. So we're subtracting less each year, which makes the model longer before we reach 4%. Um, do uh, we need to go out to 40 something so we'll do this okay there we go and so we actually don't hit 4% until you're 47 now um, oh we did our cheat didn't quite work um, our point zero plus point zero 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 one didn't quite work um, so uh, I can mess with that we can make that even finer if we need to um, uh, but that's all right. It's close enough. 3.9 and 4 and over this, it would it would come out to the same number of years. So um, there's some things you can do to make that even finer. It just takes a little bit more work. But anyway, and then we know instead of, you know, if, we, if all of our other assumptions so far, perpetual growth, our discount, and our current growth assumptions are good, uh, then the model has to go for almost 44 years before we hit perpetuity. Uh, otherwise, uh, we don't get the right answer. So... Anyway, that's how you can build a more complex dividend discount model. Um, we'll talk about all the pieces, how we build the discount factor and some of those things in, uh, in class.